Hermitage plan amendment request. We're gonna go ahead and get started with the meeting. Uh, as you can see on the panelists, we have um, planning staff. We've got a couple other team members with us tonight and we have somebody helping us from ITS. We have a uh, council member Roten with us and representatives of the applicant teams. Um, tonight, we are of course here uh, at this link with WebEx, we also uh, are able to be viewed on Metro National Network and Facebook Live. Um, a few logistics here uh, to talk about with this, bear with me. Um, everyone but the presenters has their audio muted and it's gonna remain that way throughout the meeting. There are two ways to ask questions. I'll talk about those on the next slide. If you're only joining the meeting via your phone, our technology does not allow for interaction and questions. So if you don't join through your computer or tablet, please contact me directly after the meeting. My contact info will be at the end of the presentation. I mentioned the different ways that you can interact with the meeting. We're also recording it and it'll be available for people who cannot attend. It'll be available to be seen on YouTube later. So two ways to ask questions. One is to use the Q&A panel on the right-hand side of your screen and type your question in. You can do that at any time during the meeting. Please send your questions to all panelists and not just one of us. We will begin answering questions when we reach the Q&A portion of the meeting. So feel free to post your questions anytime you think of them. The other way is during the Q&A time, you can raise your virtual hand to request to be unmuted in order to verbally ask your question. Another important note, you can see all the panelists on your computer, but you cannot see other attendees. You will only see your name. So don't think you're the only person at the meeting. Meanwhile, as panelists, we can see everyone. And just an important note, remember if you're only joining by the phone and not through your computer, you won't be able to ask questions. Tonight's agenda. The purpose of the meeting is to describe and provide some background information on community planning in Nashville and how policy and zoning are different. We'll discuss the land use policy changes and the associated rezoning request. Then we'll open it up for questions and discussions. There'll be plenty of time for questions and ways for follow-up questions. This is a planning department initiated meeting to explain requested changes to the Hermitage community plan and hear from the community on the desi desire and appropriateness of the request. The request involved four areas. One area is along the east side of Dodson Chapel Road near the intersection with Central Pike, area one. Area two is along Central Pike west of Dodson Chapel Road up to the railroad. Area three is behind that to the south of that area. And area four is Dodson Chapel near Old Hickory Boulevard that was damaged by the March tornado. The input received at this meeting weighs heavily into planning's recommendation to the Planning Commission. We will be listening and making notes on the questions and comments received tonight. A bit of background, community planning began in Nashville in the 1980s and we've used community plans as a means of applying Nashville Next, the countywide long range plan, which is very broad. Within Nashville Next are 14 community plans that are tailored to the issues and needs of each community. These community plans along with other plans guide where development and preservation should occur in each community. The Donaldson Hermitage Old Hickory plan area has a star on it. These plans are created with the community, adopted by the planning commission and updated with the community. Planners use land use policy, which addresses the form and character of development in order to implement the vision established in each community plan. Every property in Nashville has a land use policy, sometimes referred to as a community character policy. Each policy is defined and described in a document called the Community Character Manual, and these policies are the standard by which future zone change requests are measured. Planners also use the transect, a tool for categorizing, understanding, and guiding various development patterns of a region from the most natural T1 open space areas, areas like Bells Bend Park, Beeman Park, Warner Parks, natural areas, no development, all the way to the most intense city area, T6 downtown, the most intense development. 
You can see in the pictures the character of the natural and built environment of each transect. Highlighted is the T3 suburban transect, which applies to much of Hermitage. Planners also use other plans, such as the Major and Collector Street Plan, which describes and has designations for Nashville's main thoroughfares. In this instance, both Dodson Chapel Road and Central Pike are classified as arterial boulevards, meaning they should evolve to become complete streets with sidewalks, bikeways, and other elements. The rail line that currently carries the Music City Star is also planned for future high-capacity transit. Policy is important because it's the guidance that rezoning requests are measured against. If a rezoning request is supported by the existing policy, there's a higher likelihood that the Planning Commission will recommend approval to Council. If the request is not supported by the existing policy, Planning Commission is unlikely to recommend approval. So an applicant may apply to change to a policy that does support the rezoning request. That means amending the community plan. Remember, community plans are not stagnant documents. People have the ability to request changes and there's a public process to amend a plan. In this case, both applicants are requesting zone changes to a zoning that is not supported by the existing policy. So along with the two rezoning requests, they are also requesting to change the policies. Planners look at a variety of factors when reviewing an application. One part is guidance from various planning documents, as I mentioned like the Major and Collector Street Plan, and it includes those from other Metro departments like walk, and, like walk and Bike and Plan to Play. We also look at the area's locational characteristics and access. Community sentiment also plays a part. Policies provide guidance and represent the vision for an area. Applying a policy change with a plan amendment does not change the current zoning. Zoning is law, it's a set of regulations that control the physical development of land, including uses, density, height, setbacks, parking, access, landscaping, and signs. As mentioned before, zoning is influenced by the policies in the community plan. So let's take, let's start taking a closer look at things. So here's a map of the existing land use policy and the areas where uh, we're looking at tonight. So here's area one, as I mentioned, it's the eastern side of Dodson Chapel across from the library and park. It's adjacent to existing suburban neighborhood center policy. And it is a part of a larger residential area currently. Area two is on the other side of the library park and police precinct. It runs along Central Pike up to the rail line Right now, it's a mixture of residential policy with a small aspect of neighborhood center policy. And it also has an older policy uh, that was a leftover from the last update called district office concentration. This policy envisions um, large office areas, much like office parks and things. And over time, as this area has been developed, there's not really much of a market for that type of district here. So that was one reason that um, folks wanted to take a look at this. And then behind this area is a pro is, are two properties. These are large properties that have a, a mixture of policy on it today. The district office concentration carries on. Then you've got conservation from the steep hillsides. And then you have a rural maintenance area it is um, carrying on from Hoggett Ford Road and some of this area here and some off the map. And then, of course, Area 4 is a mixture of mostly residential policy with a small part of community center policy along Old Hickory Boulevard. And this, of course, is the area that was damaged and destroyed by the tornado. So this is policy. And I want to show you an existing zoning map here. So today, area one is zoned residential. Area two and three are also zoned residential. This is saying, um, area one is saying residential one and two family on 8,000 square foot lots minimum. Areas two and three are saying residential single family on 15,000 square foot lot minimums. And then area four is a mixture of those two along with a specific plan. So as I said before, policy is what guides future entitlement requests like zoning. Zoning is law and it's what can be built there today. 
So now we're gonna zoom in and take a, a little bit closer look at each area. Area one, it's six properties and approximately seven acres. The request is to change this from residential, which is called suburban neighborhood evolving policy, which is a mixture of housing types to suburban neighborhood center policy. And we currently are reviewing a zone change request for these three Southern properties here. Here's a, a Google map image shows you see a lot of tree cover along with the houses. Here's a photo looking north from the Southern end of the study area. A couple of the houses in the study area and then looking south from the northern edge of the study area. Areas two and three, currently, here's the small area of neighborhood center policy that's outside the study area. So you've got this part, area two, that contains some of the same policies, area one, suburban neighborhood evolving, mixture of housing types, district office concentration, which are those large scale offices, then you've got the rural maintenance, which are uh, houses and agricultural uses, usually on two acre lot minimums. And you've got conservation policy, which is the green, which shows up throughout here with the steep slope, shows up across the railroad with the, with the floodplains and creek. And then of course shows up in the quarry property too. And then area three is district office concentration policy with the rural maintenance and conservation policy. So the request is we're taking a look at seeing what people think about making this neighborhood center, suburban neighborhood center policy, which is a small scale mix of uses that serve uh, neighborhoods. And then uh, making this neighborhood evolving policy with a mixture of housing types also in suburban character. And in this case, a zone change has been requested for this piece right here, which is about 3.6 acres of this study area. And of course, as I mentioned before, this is adjacent to the rail line, currently the Music City Star, in the future classified for high capacity transit. And it's unique in the situation of across from civic uses, a quarry, the industrial uses and bounded by um, the river and rail line. So if you look at a Google map image, you see a lot of current tree cover in this area. There's a part that has been like uh, with gravel and some pavement here, but most of it also a small piece down here with a small building, but most of it is undeveloped with steep slopes and tree cover. So when you look along Central Pike, here's uh, the one small building, but then you see um, a lot of trees and you can see some of the ridge line here. Okay. And then area four, um, we want to discuss, as I mentioned, we had uh, the tornado destroyed here and did a lot of damage uh, along here as well. Um, folks wanted to talk about is, uh, is the long-term vision to still have this a mixture of housing types and civic uses, or could you have uh, a mix of uses, a neighborhood center scale, or possibly extend the community center policy along Altigree Boulevard? No one has requested any type of zone change in this area. Since we were talking about a nearby areas, we just wanted to talk about what thoughts people had for this area as well. So now let's start off. Um, Roy, do you want to uh, start describing what, uh, what you would like to do or what the property owner would like to do here? I will do my best if you can. <laughs> I'm going to try to go back to this share content, see if that'll work. How do I, how do, I do that, Anita? Do you drop the ball back to me again? Yes. There we go. Nick. Let me try that. So, um, so my client represents these three parcels that are on Dotson Chapel across, more or less across from that part by the library. And when he contacted me originally many months ago, he was looking at doing some type of a residential use here, and maybe a mid, maybe like a mid-rise type building, a, a three-level building. But in a lot of my discussions I've had in the community, uh, there's a, a, a need here or a desire here to have some type of mixed use so that people that go to the park can also maybe walk across the street to a small shop or to buy ice cream or, or sit down and have coffee. 
And so what we did is we filed a zone change request for these three properties to a mixed use. Um, and that mixed use basically does not fall in conformance with the current land use policy. And that's more or less why we are part of this discussion. Uh, we've been, you know, sort of on hold for this for quite a while because we knew that there were other people in this area that also wanted to consider uh, changes in policy. And then lo and behold, we also had a tornado, which probably broadened the scope of what we're going to discuss. So anyway, uh, so my client has requested a base zone change for a mixed use zoning, which would allow uh, shops along the bottom for people to be able to enjoy that could walk across the street or people that live there to be able to use as well. And this are probably more neighborhood supported type of, uh, of uses and activities. Um, let me see, we'll stop sharing this. If I can, I'm not sure how that's gonna work. Stop sharing, okay. And I'm gonna go back to the share content again. And, and this was an, I think I hope this is it. This was an early drawing that I had prepared when we were looking at this to show something that would occur maybe in a three-story building that have parking along the front so people could uh, utilize shops there or they could walk across the street. You can actually see this uh, network of sidewalks here uh, within that park and how convenient this parcel would be to support uh, people that are actually uh, attending or wanting to gather at the park. And also the people that would actually live here would have a, a really great opportunity for open space uh, within the park itself. And you can see this is adjacent to multifamily zoning. This would probably be done with buffering. There would be buffering required based upon the mixed use zoning uh, required by codes anyway. So I think all that would be addressed. Uh, I have, uh, if you have any questions that doesn't um, properly describe what we're wanting to do, just let me know. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Roy. Um, and I think, let's see, I think Scott Morton has joined us. Um, Hi, Adita. I'm so sorry. I, I just got the link set up, so I apologize for my... Well, so you were you're right on cue because uh, it's time for you to, uh, you want to talk a little bit about your uh, client's project? Sure, absolutely. Happy to. Um, you want to share some images, right? I do. I have a PDF I'd like to share. Um, okay. Let me just see. two. Okay. I'm so sorry. Do you hear that in the background? That's... You're having you're having too much fun at your house. Uh yeah, I'm sorry. It's just timing. It's the witching hour. Very kids. Too much online learning today. Um, <laughs> so can can you see my screen, Anita? Yes. Okay, great. Well, yeah, thanks everybody. Um yeah, and just briefly I'll go over um our site at 3728 Central Pike. Um, you can see here that the property is very uniquely shaped like a, a pizza pie um, right across from the Nashville, the, the police station and the library on Central Pike. Um, also the, the developers for this property is Gary A Development. They are uh, also developing the townhomes that are about to be completed right next door, which you can see in the aerial here, um, the, uh, the new townhomes adjacent to the site. Uh, the current site is home to an industrial use. Um, I believe they make pallets. Um, this is the current operation of the site. Um, and across Central Pike, you can see the large uh, Vulcan um, rock quarry, um, which is, is such a, a unique and identifiable uh, landscape in the area. Um, I'm not gonna go through, again, this is just uh, for information, our site relative to the, uh, the proposed plan amendment. As you can see, the plan amendment is uh, everything outlined in the dark black, and our site is highlighted in yellow with the star just to show its, uh, its location. Our current application for this project is to 
rezone the property um, in conjunction with the new policy amendment for a mixed use uh, zoning designation of MULA. So it's mixed use limited alternative. Um, as you can see, just a, a closer zoom in, uh, the adjacent parcel that is currently developed is townhomes, which is um, all residential, but the base zoning is mixed use limited. Um, we're seeking to rezone the property to a similar uh, category for mixed use limited alternative, which would uh, create a much more walkable uh, urban contact or let's say urban uh, walkable buildings close to the street uh, relationship to Central Pike for some uh, neighborhood serving commercial uses potentially. Our site plan for the property, again, just to show a concept that would demonstrate um, what MULA would uh, permit, includes three different structures with an internal parking lot. All the parking would be tucked away um, out of sight behind the buildings uh, from Central Pike. We have a, a mixed use building that is approximately uh, 7,450 square feet of building footprint. It includes a currently planned as for a large uh, restaurant tenant. And um, on the other side would be for office, uh, potentially small neighborhood office space. Uh, this is a smaller commercial structure. Uh, the restaurant tenant would be a two story volume. So the restaurant would occupy both the ground floor and the upper floor of one half of the building, if you will. Um, so there'd be tall ceilings and a small mezzanine space with some additional seating on the upper floor. Um, but it'll be a very open environment. The other side of the building would include a, you know, some small office tenant space for a small tenant on the ground floor and a small tenant on the second floor. Additionally, we proposed um, quite an expansive plaza space uh, in conjunction with this mixed use building to provide some outdoor dining opportunities that spills over into uh, towards Central Pike, adjacent to the new sidewalks that will be constructed as part of this redevelopment. Um, supporting the mixed use building includes the residential buildings, both we have two structures, residential A and residential B, which will be a mixture of one in studios, ones and two bedroom uh, offerings for the area that will create uh, different price points and housing choices um, in the area. It also will provide for some good residential uh, rooftops to support some of the proposed commercial that is envisioned in the area, um, both within this property and um, in the surrounding context of other sites in the area. Again, we're very early in the process of the visioning effort and entitlements and rezoning, but um, wanted to begin to share some general character that we've uh, begun to contemplate for the proposed architectural style. Uh, it's very important that we that this fits in with the area context, um, both architecturally and within the site. Um, I could briefly, one, one item that we have heard from the community that's very important is just the buffering of any proposed uses to the adjacent properties just to the south of the site. And uh, there's a residential community up the, at the top of the hill. And so this project is proposing to preserve the upper quadrant of the, the triangle or the tip of the pie, if you will, um, both with the existing vegetation and topography, as well as supplementing that with um, additional screening and buffering landscape material. Um, and then just to give you a little bit of a flavor, um, you know, we think this area on Central Pike, which is envisioned as a larger corridor ultimately as a five lane uh, boulevard that, you know, prominently connects from Donaldson Pike over to Hermitage um, <clears throat> with some small neighborhood serving retail. So again, our mixed use building is anticipated to be uh, two stories in height, 
and we are proposing to have some some nice plaza and outdoor dining spaces that spill out onto that public space um, and the residential structures around it would be uh, limited to three stories in height for this project so that concludes our uh, brief summary of our zoning application and um, happy to answer any questions during the Q&A. Thank you, Anita. Wonderful, thanks, Scott. Um, Shorty, can I have the uh, presenter's ball back, please? Absolutely. Okay, there you go, thanks. Um, and let's see if, uh, I'm trying to figure out if I have to start every time. Perfect. Let's see. Okay, so we are to the Q and A part now, and I didn't see anyone uh, writing in questions yet. But two ways. Hey, excuse me for a second, Anita. Give me one second. I'm trying to get the option back. Um, it, it's not popping up, so I'm troubleshooting it right now. Uh, give me a few minutes. And Anita, I believe that applies to the Q and A. Like writing in the questions only if people want to raise their hands, I believe we can. Sure. So we've got about 15 people on the call. So um, if you've got questions, raise your virtual hand, option two at the bottom here. Uh, raise your hand and we will unmute and uh, call on you. Okay, Anita, I see two people so far. Um, I don't know if I can unmute necessarily. Let me see. No, I don't have that permission. So let's see if I can stop it. And Jamie Adams. Um, I believe we have a question from Rose Wood. Rose, if you want to go. Hello. Um, I think my not necessarily concern about the development is just that the surrounding infrastructure is changed in sync with it, that we don't do this development and then have even worse traffic issues. Um, that the sidewalks and the support are done along with it, especially Central Pike is full of dump trucks that drive extremely fast and are throwing their rocks out all the time. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate, I live on Pierside Drive, that we have such close access to the greenways and stores and even the train station. Um, but we to them without driving because it's down either Central Pike or Dodson Chapel. Um, and along with that, I would really like to see more roundabouts installed that just throwing up more traffic lights isn't really going to solve the situation, especially at like James K. Lane and even um, Dodson Chapel and Central Pike, I think could support a roundabout. Um, and that we do focus on the making sure trees and things are built, that it just doesn't become a whole bunch of concrete building in the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Anita, can I say one thing? Rose, thank you for calling in because everything you just said, I couldn't said it, I couldn't have said it any better. So, <laughs> thank you. Thanks. I did have a question. Um, how is the rock quarry considered conservation? Um, it's got um, our maps and info pick up their steep topography and their waterways. And so okay. sometimes you'll see conservation policy actually is recognizing man-made features. Okay. Sometimes we clip those out, but it doesn't. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And I did forget in my list of assets that we have around here would be the Stones River Park, especially as they develop that. It would be, I just feel silly loading up my bike on my bike rack to go to the Coles Greenway or the even the Dam Greenway. And especially all the people filling in with Magnolia Farms and stuff. Um, they could, if they had a way, they would probably, or potentially take their bike or something to the library. And those are big assets and everything's just kind of stranded in islands. Right. Anita, can I tell her one thing real quick? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Rose, they're, it's mm -hmm. supposed to be starting next month. There's supposed to be a sidewalk all the way from Riverwood, all the way down Dodson Chapel to the park. Oh, that's um, exciting. It, it got funded five years ago and it's just now getting <laughs> around to getting built but it is um if you remember all the orange stakes that used to be along the road there and now they have all yes. the people working there it's kind of in 
that's what's all the planning is heading down to the intersection of Dodson Chapel and Central Pike. And so all this is kind of in that same plan along with the train station in the new park. And I know Anita knows all about this as well. So it's it's all one big plan. It's just got to all kind of come together and hopefully the, the mayor's office and planning can all get behind it. So thank you, Rose, yes. for calling. I appreciate it. Yep, no problem. Yes, thank you, Rose. Okay, and then Rose, if you can put your hand down, we have a, the next question is from Jamie Adams. Hello, um, I live on Dodson Chapel Pike and I'm just concerned about all the traffic that goes through here and on Central Pike. Um, I don't see how you're gonna come up with five lanes over there on Central Pike and all of that. Um, what's over there right now? Um, and, and to be honest, the quarry, um, when they do an explosion, um, I live in Noel Cove townhomes and I feel it. And I live on the uh, end furthest away from the road. I can't understand anybody wanting to put any kind of office space or residential space or multi-use space in that area. And that's all I have to say so far. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Um, I think uh, people do find this area desirable. Um, Scott, you wanna jump in and talk about why your client uh, wants to build a, a product? Uh, certainly, <clears throat> well, that's a, that's a great observation uh, about the rock quarry, of course, and, and I think that it's a legitimate concern when it comes to uh, you know the, the blasting and vibration from that operation, but um, honestly, the, this location in Central Pike with its uh, strong connectivity to uh, not only the interstate permitted, but uh, the Dalton Pike as well, um, it's just, it's a very desirable for lots of reasons. Um, you know, it has great access to large scale commercial activity, uh, but also uh, a really nice opportunity to uh, have some strong residential connections throughout. And so um, I would I would be, uh, to be honest, the proximity to the rock quarry is uh, perhaps a concern in the short term, but I think uh, hopefully long term, and again, I, I don't know as much about its uh, <clears throat> history, but ultimately someday, uh, you know, it is anticipated to be a potential redevelopment site. So. Um, with the planned expansion of Central Pike that, uh, to create a larger arterial through the neighborhood, this has become a very desirable location for uh, residents and neighborhood and commercial. Thanks, Scott. Do we have, do we have additional questions? Uh, I believe we had a question from Ina M. And Jamie, if, if uh, you have no other questions, you can put your hand down. Okay, so my concern is also, I think, uh, reflected in what the other uh, residents have said. Um, I live off of, like, Seville Drive is maybe right off of Dawson Chapel, and it's the traffic. Because, one, the, the roads are very narrow, and people are are, like, flying by. So with these multi-use, which is very exciting, but at the same time, it's going to generate traffic. So what is the plan to somehow minimize, one, the noise pollution, because it's getting noisier with the more apartments are coming in on the side over there next to Riverwood. So that's more traffic. What is being done to help control the noise pollution? All this extra And like, like the, the previous speaker said, you know, the roads are very narrow. How are we going to be able to support all this additional traffic that's generated by these multi-use areas? Roy or Scott, you wanna talk about how you factored in traffic concerns? Yeah, you know, this is Scott Morton here. Um, I, I know, uh, and the councilman pr could probably speak to more of the global um, capital plans for the area, but uh, 
As far as uh, the sites along Central Pike, for example, um, we're working diligently with Public Works to ensure that um, you know our traffic and uh, impact is mitigated through improvements. Um, for example, uh, townhomes that are being developed next door by the same developer are being required to put in a center turn lane um, in Central Pike for that segment of roadway. Um, and recognizing that that is, you know, ultimately an interim um, solution uh, to the planned expansion of Central Pike to a, a five-lane arterial uh, boulevard. But, uh, you know, developments, I guess the point being that each development that comes in will obviously uh, generate a stronger need for improvements on Central Pike, but they're also having to uh, invest heavily in their <coughs> impact to the community as well in the interim. And so, um, again, I, I know the capital improvements plan for Central Pike have been in the works for many years, and um, I don't know the, you know, ultimately the outlook for funding and implementation is going to be uh, up to, uh, uh, obviously, budget and finance uh, as metro. If I could speak for just one second, um, Anita probably knows this, and Roy probably knows this as well. But um, Old Eager Boulevard, all the way out into Mount Juliet, has been funded by the state to be widened to five lanes, and they've already started the engineering for that. Um, how Metro ended up with Old Hickory Boulevard to Lebanon Road as the entity that has to widen that portion of a state road, I don't know, but it has been on the capital improvement budget for many years. Um, all it takes is for the mayor's office and planning to come together and say, yes, it's time for this to be widened because the development along there has become so intense that it needs to be widened. I think we're getting to that point uh, with the growth of Nashville and so that's kind of, once they start widening out on the other side of Oliger Boulevard, I don't think the mayor's office or any politician is going to want the one section to not get widened as well. So hopefully we're uh, looking within the next few years of that happening. So I just wanted to add that, Anita. Thanks. So in the bigger picture, are they also planning to reinvest in the park and in the library and like the street markings or, you know, everything else? <laughs> stuff just kind of rot away. No, I completely understand. And there's actually uh, on the capital improvement budget, there is actually a new community center on the capital improvement budget for Hermitage, which would take a little bit of a larger footprint than the community center that is there now. And that was put on by Parks, I believe, two years ago because of looking at as y'all know how much Hermitage has grown over the last few years, uh, they're looking at a much larger community center for the area like it's been done in Bellevue over in Antioch and Southeast Nashville in that location. So everyone, all this area is really being looked at by all the departments because of the growth in the area with all the new neighborhoods. So I want y'all to understand kind of what's happening is this area, as you can see by developers, they understand it as well. It's really being looked at for like a community center, which has been planned for this area for a really long time. It's just now starting to come to a head. So thanks, Anita. Thank you, Councilman. All right, uh, Ina, if that concludes your questions, you can put your hand down. Um, I believe we have a question from Linda Freeman up next. Hi, um, this is Linda Freeman, and I was on a meeting last week with Scott Morton and his team, and I'd just like to make another comment. Uh, the lady from um, Bill and Dotson Chapel, when she was talking about the blasting that happens at the quarry, mm -hmm. Scott, you said that so far there hasn't been any concerns from the people building the townhomes. I do not believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that anyone has moved into those townhome yet. And I'm not sure if anyone has been there when they blast at the rock quarry, but my house was damaged a month ago from the shaking of that. And so for you to say that there hasn't been an issue with that yet for things being built there, you need to, to make sure that you let people know that no one has bought that yet and been there when the rock, rock quarry actually did blasting. 
because it rumbles, it shakes. And like I said, I actually had damage to my house a month ago from that blasting. So just, just you know, keep that in mind when you guys are thinking about how all of these are gonna be built and everything and that people don't have a concern over that because probably had I known 16 years ago that that blasted like that once to twice a week, I might not have bought where I bought because of the, um, the atmosphere when that does blast. Anita, ma'am, may I respond? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Linda, and, and thank you for that insight. And uh, I'm sorry that that has happened to your property. That's very unfortunate. And I hope that uh, hopefully you're in contact with the uh, um, company to uh, mitigate those, those impacts. But um, I, I think that is completely um, legitimate. Um, no, nobody has moved into the townhomes. They, they're getting very close to occupancy. Um, in the next few weeks, they will be applying for their uh, use and occupancy permits. So nobody is living in the townhomes yet. So ultimately that concern has yet to be realized. Um, when I spoke about the site, it was really merely from a, a construction standpoint, there hasn't been any damage to the property yet, but uh, it is concerning to hear that uh, your property has received damage. Um, and uh, I do hope that, that the, the parties that are responsible for that are uh, held accountable. And, uh, and I do hope that uh, that is mitigated in the future, but that is a great background for, for uh, everyone to consider. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Scott and Linda. Any more questions? All right, uh, Linda, uh, if you can put your hand down. Um, and then our next question is Christy Wood. If you're ready, Christy. Um, I have a question. I came late to this meeting, sorry. So this may have already been addressed. Um, I heard you say that you were gonna widen, Central Pike was on the plans to be widened to a five lane road. And then I heard you say that over your boulevard was on plans to be widened to a five lane road. Our home is on Dotson Chapel across from the community center. We're one of those five or six houses that are, well, not Benson's Food Town anymore, but it used to be behind, that sits on that road. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans to widen Dotson Chapel? Because it's starting to get really difficult to get out of the driveway of our house. So are there any plans in the works to widen, widen Dotson Chapel or if you've already addressed that, I'm sorry. Like I said, it came late to the meeting, so. Um, no, Christy, uh, we uh, we haven't uh, specified. I don't think so. I mean, overall, Dodson Chapel is called uh, to be three lanes. And so, you know, it is it is a narrow two lane now uh, and needs probably a continuous center turn lane. What the councilman was saying is that um, Central Pike, Multicre Boulevard, uh, east to the county line is going to be wide into five lanes and that um, hopefully in the coming years this section of central pike will be widened as well all right uh, I believe our next question. Question. thanks christy oh thank you she's telling me they're gonna okay all right, uh, I believe Terry Blystone has the next question. Terry. Hi, my name is Terry, and I have the property at the area one you were talking about right there at Dotson Chapel, mm -hmm. um, right beside uh, what's proposed across from the park. And yeah, my concern is I'm already beside a business, and I don't really know how comfortable I feel being sandwiched between more business on both sides of me. So that is a big concern. Um, then also the added traffic and the lack of sidewalks. Uh, also, has anybody thought about it in, with more apartments or uh, more uh, living space there with the children? And where are these kids going to go to school? Has that been in the plan somewhere? Um, those are all concerns of mine. And then, you know, there are a lot of beautiful trees in that park. And so, you know, how much land is going to have to be taken to widen the roads? Tree next to us. Those are all big concerns. Do you guys, um, I'm on Gerardo and um, we are together. And this is a beautiful tree, maple tree, huge, huge. It's beautiful, and you guys are gonna tear it down. I mean, it's it's in the 
Mr. Uh, what? Dell's property, Corey Dell. He got three houses there. And uh, there's a few trees that are really could be historic trees uh, or one of those uh, trees there um, for the tree association or something like that. I don't know. But um, there are some beautiful trees too. You're going to get rid of those. So I okay. think he's talking about that. Um, taking trees out from the park, the park itself. I think you mentioned that, Terry, uh, as part of why you vote or anything. Uh, Roy, do you have any um, anything with the saving trees, saving any of those trees? Well, I mean, this, uh, again, is just um, a base zone change, so there's not anything planned certain. But I just want to make sure that people understand that uh, when growth and development occurs, that Metro requires that developer to, you know, do road improvements and, and offset any kind of uh, increase in traffic. Uh, there's a lot going on here. Um, Dawson Chapel is a very narrow street. It does not have very much connectivity with sidewalks. I think all of that will occur as these properties develop. Um, it's not going to be anything like Central Pike. As a matter of fact, there will, probably, there will most likely be crosswalks. And so those will actually perhaps provide a little traffic calming in that area as well. Um, anytime we do a development on a piece of property, and I don't own the property. I represent a, a client that owns the property. So I don't want anybody to think that's my property. It's not. Uh, but whenever our office does a plan, uh, we always look at uh, existing trees and we try to preserve as much as we possibly can. And I think it's incumbent on the, on the design of this property, since it is across from a community park that is very well landscaped, that for this to maintain in some kind of context, that it needs to be developed that way so that that canopy is preserved even on the opposite side, on our side. So uh, I think all of those concerns uh, that the community would have would be shared concerns with anybody that would develop this property. Uh, you're not going to go in here and just tear everything down. That would be totally counterproductive uh, to come up with the type of uh, quality project uh, to remain in context with what, what exists there today. Well, if it's a tree on the way, you're going to tear it down. So the business is business, but uh, you guys don't want to care about the tree. The other thing is, is we well, said that we're going to be between two businesses. Um, we don't feel comfortable about that. So where where are you on Central Pond, Dawson Chapel? 4005. Oh, 4, oh. We're building the house right now, and it's a beautiful house. Everybody everybody liking it. But uh -huh. we thought the other house is going to be built, too, eventually. We're going to have something like, a, you know, Franklin downtown, where the houses always show they're kind of nice. But with this, uh, putting more businesses, um, I don't know. I mean, eventually, those get, some of the business is going to close, and new business is going to be open. There's going to be people come and go, and and it's going to be safety for us, too. Like, we don't know who's going to be driving there at night and the parking. And this, we are between you. We're going to be between the two businesses. I think it's important for you to understand that what's happening tonight is we're talking about a land use change process. We're not talking about a zone change process. And mm -hmm. so you have to look at the long term, look beyond this year or next year, but look well down the road. And I think that, you know, when you look at this area, if, if you know, and based upon what the needs of this community is and, and, the, and the opportunities available with this public park, is that those houses will most likely not fit within a long term plan. I know that people live there now. I understand that. But ultimately in the future, I think there's just a different vision for what needs to happen here, not only for the, the neighbors that live here, but, but looking at the people that live well beyond this. And so, uh, and I think that is the vision and the focus uh, probably shared by a lot of people is that this park is pretty much underutilized today. It has great opportunities and this is a great infield opportunity. So well, I'm gonna let you talk about that but this is not a zone change request okay we're talking about more or less changing the policy which might allow something to occur in the future when the property goes to the zone change process it's a totally different process the council members highly involved the community is involved again and and that comes into play well i understand i live in terry place that is probably two miles right now from from the library and we i always took my kids over there because oh no problem mm -hmm. with me tra traveling five minutes i mean if you really 
care about the area or, or you or the person you represent. Um, I don't think you should be turning out those are beautiful houses. They could be they can build up. But I mean, you want to make it commercial. And that's the thing is you want to change the plans, the original plans. You want to change the original plans from residential to commercial. Yeah, the, the real intent on this property, at least the property that I'm my client, is he's not looking at uh, populating this building with families and children. It's really more geared more towards people that are uh, older, people like myself, uh, people that want to be able to walk somewhere. They don't really need their cars that much. They want to go to the library. They want to go to the park. They want to have all those conveniences right there with them. Uh, a, a small coffee shop or a place to sit down with your laptop or a place to get ice cream or, or you know, just neighborhood community supported things that you would want to have when you live there. So that's, that is the focus and that's what we're looking for and that's what we're asking for and that's why we're having this meeting. But thank you for your concerns. Thank you. Right. Great. Um, Terry, I just wanted to add that, so you're the, the small property that's actually zoned commercial services then, right? I mean, you're zoned for is a, It is zoned commercial, yes, but it, it's just a single family residence right now, yes. Okay. okay. Correct. All right, and Terry, uh, if you can put your hand down. Um, I don't see any other hands right now. Okay. Um, would it, are there further questions? While we're seeing if there's any additional questions, Councilman, do you uh, do want to say anything else? Thanks, Anita. I just want to thank everybody for coming to the meeting because um, I really want everybody to see what's kind of going on in the policy for the area around Dodson Chapel and um, Central Pike. I, I don't know if people are aware. I know I had talks with planning several years ago, and I know the RTA contacted me just a few months ago to see what was going on on Central Pike because the area down by the railroad tracks, uh, which sits directly in between um, the Donaldson train stop and the Hermitage train stop, which is out toward the county line, it sits almost equidistant directly in the middle of that. And so they're really looking at that for a stop in the future, uh, depending on how fast the growth is along Central Pike. And I know that's one of the things that they want to get taken care of. I just want everybody to know that so they kind of understand kind of where the planning, uh, long-term planning is going as far as Central Pike. And so, um, but I just want to thank everybody for coming out and, and looking to see what's going on and kind of the bigger plan that you folks need at planning and the developers kind of see for the area. So um, obviously y'all have been telling me about this stuff for ever since I got on council and as we move forward. So thanks everyone. Wonderful. Thank you, Councilman. I think we have another question from Jamie, right? Yes, you do. Um, you said something about, are, you, are we going to talk about uh, Zone 4, where the, where the church was that was torn up, destroyed in the tornado? Um, we can just briefly. I think we're bumping up against time. And so okay. what we're thinking is a, an additional meeting, perhaps. Okay. Well, Nita, I, can do a, I can do this in 30 seconds real okay. quick because sure. I had a, a emails all this week about it. They're going to clean it up. The church, the middle, uh, the United Methodist Church of Middle Tennessee owns that property. They have not made a decision yet what they're going to do with the property. So right now, until they make a decision on whether they're going to sell or whether they're going to rebuild. Um, it's my understanding that there weren't enough membership in the church to rebuild the church, but the school was, it was doing okay. So they still have not decided what they're gonna do. So until the church makes a decision, we're basically just kind of sitting on our hands. Okay, so. well, part two of my question. Um, you said Dodson Chapel Pike, uh, this goes to Roy when you were saying about uh, three lanes, or maybe it was you, Anita, that said that uh, a three-lane road, with a continuous turning lane. Like I said, I live at Noel Cove, mm -hmm. and there's the James K. Street, and then at that point, there is no, um, right there at that little bridge, it's just two lanes, and it's two lanes down there to the to the church where the church stood, and then there's three that come, then it turns into three lanes, uh, you know, uh, one coming into Dodson Chapel and two going out of onto O'Hickory Boulevard. 
-hmm. So if somebody comes in, so uh, Roy's people, uh, this comes to fruition, and they say they're going to make this a, a three-lane road, uh, so right, um, it, when you get close to the community center, I think it turns into three lanes. No, it doesn't turn into three lanes. So what I'm thinking is they start on, on the end where Roy's people are, and they make it three lanes, and then what's going to happen to where we are, where I live? It's two lanes. There are no sidewalks. There's a lot of people that walk mm -hmm. through there. And so I'm just, I'm just curious as to has anybody thought about this, or is it going to continue to be two lanes? I know when there's accidents on the interstate and people come get off Old Hickory Boulevard and go Central Pike past the hospital and turn down Dodson Chapel, it's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Uh, you know, or when there's uh, somebody in town where they have to close all the interstates. You know, normally I could be, I could have gotten home in 50 minutes, you know, and in some days it was like two hours, and it's like, this is ridiculous. Um, so I'm just curious about um, the ideas and thoughts of the future for this end of Dodson Chapel, because when you cross over Old Hickory Boulevard and when it becomes Andrew Jackson Parkway, down there by RT, down by the Music City Star, there's mm -hmm. sidewalks on both sides of the street. Yeah. There's a lot more room down there. I think you've got, you know, a couple of things that, that go on when we look more holistically at development. You've got, um, if somebody's going to come in and redevelop a site, that's when you're really looking for what do future plans, and that means like the street plan, the greenways network, different things. How, how does it come into play? And you may have room then for some road widenings and things. If you're dealing with an area like where you're living on the east side of Dodson Chapel there where it's it's very constrained and the houses are up or, or close to the road then you know you may not be dealing with the road widening you may be needing sidewalks and different things like that and the mm -hmm. other side of the road might have to carry more of that burden of a turn lane something like that you know there are places where there's um, historical fabric in place where a road is not widened all the way in certain sections because you don't want to take out important buildings and buildings of significance yeah. Well, if there, if there was just sidewalks on one side of the road, I mean, the, it's it's street, yes. a little gravel, and then somebody's yard. Right. No, I agree. It's very tight there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. So, Thank you, Ms. Adams. Let's go back. i got a couple more slides. We're almost at time. And then, um, as a councilman said, we can talk more about the, the area with tornado damage uh, when the church makes its decision uh, about the future and some things like that then. We'll come back, back to that area. Um, let's see here what, um, two more slides. Okay. So, um, right now, what we're looking at is um, for, for land use policy, Roy touched on this a little bit, land use policy amendments, um, that was the main thrust of this meeting. But of course, when anybody talks about change in policy, folks always want to hear, well, what plans? You know, what are they going to do? If you change the policy, what's going to be built there? So we always get a little bit into that rezoning discussion too. So with land use policy changes, when we update a community plan or when we talk about Nashville Next or the major and collector street plan, those decisions, the planning commission makes those decisions. When we talk about rezonings, um, we make a recommendation to the planning commission who in turn makes a recommendation to the Metro Council. So that's where, why Roy was saying, you know, that with a rezoning, it's in the council person's hands then as to the outcome. So, so right now, both of these are tracking for um, next Thursday, a week from this Thursday's planning commission meeting. And that means that uh, publicly staff reports, which are the planner's recommendation to our commission, would be published this Friday. And then at a future date, the uh, council public hearing is scheduled. I don't know if that would be October or when exactly that date would be. So I know we've had uh, two or three people that called in and so I know um, 
that I want you all to, to send me some some of your, we, we had a lot of quality comments tonight and a lot of good questions and traffic is, is always a concern around the city, especially as our city continues to grow and we face pressures of that growth and inconveniences of that growth. But then I heard a lot of quality of life things like um, sidewalks and connecting greenways and bikeways and connecting the sidewalk network and preparing for transit and things things like that that are dealt with as developments come in. So I need to know from people if you um, have some harsh feelings one way or the other. I mean, harsh, like in the sense of, no, we do not want to change land use policy, or we're okay changing land use policy, but we want to pay close attention to the quality of rezonings that are happening. So please um, send me, email me your comments. For those of you calling in, it's Anita. A N I T A dot McKeg, M C C A I G at Nashville dot gov, G O V. You also can call me at 615 862 7156. And as I mentioned, we will record this as being recorded for YouTube so that folks can watch it. But I'd like to hear from you all soon um, this week so that we know if we should continue with the track of this being on planning commission next week or not. So thanks everyone for coming out. I appreciate my uh, co-workers and the councilmen and applicants for joining us. And thanks um, Sade for helping us with all the technical aspects. And that concludes tonight's meeting. Good night, everyone. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit Nashville.gov.